I recently took my fully rigid Jones Plus Titanium Space Frame Bicycle to the Mount Bachelor Bike Park in Central Oregon. One typically would not bring a fully rigid bike to a downhill bike park, but knowing how well these bikes perform in just about every other environment, and having had a great experience up here a few years ago with my steel Jones Plus bike, I decided I would give it a go and document it this time around. A quick rundown on Mount Bachelor. It's a volcano located about 22 miles west of Bend, Oregon. During the winter, it hosts world-class skiing and snowboarding. In 2013, a summertime-only downhill mountain bike park was opened, featuring two chairlifts and 15 downhill-only trails, giving riders a total of 13 miles of single track. The lodge and the bottom of the chairlifts are at about 6,400 feet above sea level, and the longer of the two lifts that operates during the summer carries you up and drops you off at about 7,700 feet above sea level. This gives riders about 1,300 feet of total descent each go. When you arrive at the park, you buy your pass for $46, unload your bike, and head for the chairlift about 100 yards away. The gates at the lift sense your valid lift pass and will open automatically when you walk up to them. You'll place your bike on the chairlift bike rack and then take a seat and enjoy the very scenic ride up the mountain. At the top, lift attendants remove the bikes from the rack and once you've dismounted the landing area, you're ready to go. You can also park the bikes at this time and grab lunch and a beer at the mid-mountain Pine Martin Lodge, which I eventually ended up doing. So what am I riding? I give a more thorough overview of my bike in a different video titled, Jones Bikes, Jones Plus Long Wheelbase Titanium Space Frame 6 Month Review. But to summarize, my frame is a Jones LWB Titanium Space Frame and my fork is a Jones Titanium Truss Fork. My handlebars are Jones Carbon H Loop Bars and I run 45mm WTB KOM light rims with 29 by 3.25 inch V bulldozer tires, front and rear. Brakes are Shimano XTs with Ice Tech rotors. Having been up here a few times before with my steel Jones Plus bike, and having experimented with beginner, intermediate, and black diamond trails, I decided to skip the black diamond trails altogether and stick to the intermediate blue trails, particularly Lava Flow, Cone Run, DSM, and Last Chance. The Black Diamond trails up here are designated as such due to the amount of big rocks, roots, and drops. Any fully rigid bike, even a Jones, is going to take a beating on that kind of trail. It can be done, but when I took my Jones through those trails a few years ago, it left such a strong impression that to this day, I avoid them. The design and build of this bike is such that if I were a more talented rider, I could weave my way through such a trail and I would be hard pressed to find a bike with more precision and controllability. But to me, those trails are just not fun with this kind of bike, and with so many other appealing options on this mountain, why bother? There are also a couple jump trails, which do look like a blast, but that kind of riding is beyond my abilities, so I will let a better rider tackle those trails for now. I think even Jeff Jones would agree that though these bikes will handle 95% of whatever you throw at them, black diamond trails at a downhill mountain bike park probably lie in the 5% of riding that is best suited for bikes with suspension. Having said that, there is a skills park near the lodge which offers riders a variety of jumps and drops on which to practice. This part of the park does not require a lift ride to get to it, and it's free to use. One of the most fun parts of the day was spending time pushing myself to ride off drops and jumps in this area with more and more speed. Given a ramp that doesn't require loading of suspension and a landing with the appropriate amount of slope, I would say that Jones bikes would be completely fine to use for jumps. With some more practice with this kind of riding, I may yet check out the jump trail later. Now for the ride. I will break the bike's handling of these trails down into a good and bad list. The good. Controllability and precision. It's no surprise that this bike provided excellent controllability and precision in steering. Navigating around obstacles, picking certain lines over wood ramps or cinder block berms, comfortably speeding through narrow trail sections, this was all very easy and satisfying. I never fell, washed out, or wrecked, and the wide tires held great traction even in the loose areas. Weighing about 27 pounds, it was easy to throw this bike around and get air when I wanted to. Though there wasn't much, I was able to compress into the wheel and pump to a small extent, either off of jumps or through flowing sections of trail. Where there were steep drops, I was never in fear of endoing because of the long wheelbase and because I could get my weight in the back seat thanks to the long reach of the handlebars. Only once did I feel the metal rim of the rear tire come into contact with the ground, and this caused a burp, after which I retrieved my hand pump for a quick trail side inflation and brought it back to a rideable pressure. My friend, who was riding behind me on his full suspension bike, ended up denting the rim of his rear tire. 
During the few times I've been up here with my Jones bikes, I've had opportunities to trade bikes with a friend who is on a full suspension bike, but I declined because squishy suspension, thin tires, and a handlebar that forces you to be leaned over and stretched out is more likely to land me in an emergency room than riding my Jones. Nothing against full suspension bikes or those who ride them, but unless I am riding a trail that falls within that 5% I spoke of before, I feel much more secure, in control, and confident on my Jones. I'm sure most riders would say the same about their own bikes, but in my case, having spent so much time with Jeff Jones learning about his design and production philosophy, I know that every inch of these bikes was designed to perform to the highest level, without compromise for aesthetics or lower production costs. The Bad I've mentioned my Steel Jones Plus a few times now. It features a 4.8 inch wide, fat front tire. I am admittedly terrible at keeping track of what tire pressures I use because I just base it off of the feel between my fingers, but I would run that fat tire fairly low so that it would eat up and absorb all the bumps. I seem to remember the ride on these trails being a little less punishing on that bike than on my tie space frame. In fact, in the future I might prefer to bring that bike up here instead. Jeff Jones was using a fat front tire for a few years on his shorter wheelbase bikes, but when I had my Plus built in 2015, I wanted the extra cushion. It could be my notoriously faulty memory or poorer trail conditions today versus a few years ago, but I feel the fatter tire on the Steel Plus bike made all the difference in absorbing the bumps. The 29 by 3.25 tires on my tie space frame are normally more than sufficient for the Central and Southern Oregon trails that I frequent, but I could have used a bit more cushion up here. Further, I have raved about how much more comfortable the carbon H-bar is compared to the aluminum version, but the holes and washboards throughout these intermediate blue trails created intense enough bumps at speed that carbon bars didn't feel like they made all that great a difference. During this ride, I used my Jones handlebar pack to store my phone, keys, and a small bike pump. Major lesson here, wrap your phone in a sock or some kind of protection when you put it in a bike pack of any kind. I've been riding with my phone since I started riding in 2012 and never once broke or cracked a screen. But after my first run of the day on Bachelor, I took my phone out of the handlebar pack and the screen was smashed to bits. I attribute that to my keys, which I could hear crashing around in the pack during my descent. I've put my phone in this same pack for years now and it never left a scratch, but this trail had its way with my phone and I've since had to replace the screen. Talk about an expensive ride. So what to take away from my experience? Flow trails with lots of berms, small jumps, and small drops are a blast on a Jones. It can easily handle this kind of riding and it can do it well. On a fully rigid bike, the fatter the tire, the more cushion you'll have, which ends up being pretty important if you want to ride all day. I think I got in four rides, totaling about 5,200 feet of descent, between about 10.30 a.m. and 3 p.m. when I threw in the towel with sore hands and a broken phone. But even if you do get bumped around a bit, you will still have a blast. I'm not a big fan of riding on roots or big rocks, particularly on a rigid bike, so up here on Bachelor, and as often as I can elsewhere, I try to avoid trails that are known to have a lot of that. But even when I do come across those features, the massive tires, long wheelbase, and controllability of the bike inspire enough confidence that I never worry about wrecking over them. Hopefully you found this video informative, and feel free to post any questions or comments below. Thanks for watching.